Hey Chris, have you found your bird yet? Have you done the stitching properly? Are the sleeves loose? That's the recording, right? Yeah. Okay. okay that's fine. What's happening my fellow geeks and geekettes? Welcome to a brand new episode of Cosplay Chris. Today marks episode 5 in Mr. Whippy. I am joined by the wonderful Miles. So today's episode is all about showing you guys the exoskeleton so far, all the 3D printed pieces disassembled. Uh, this is the final episode before I go away to the States. So we just want to show you guys everything pretty much laid out on the table. We're going to show you guys piece by piece what still needs to be done, what we're still tinkering with. We're then going to put the whole piece together over a montage, suit up with the exoskeleton, with the harness itself, the coveralls, the boots, show you how it functions. And then what are we going to do? Yeah, we're going to call it a day. All right, so before we show you guys all the 3D printed pieces laid out on the table, Milo, what are we looking at here? So this is the CAD design that we've made for all the different parts, how they interact, how they work together, making sure the joints all work. So this is Fusion 360 you're this, using for this? That's right, so it's all designed in Fusion 360. Um, all of these parts are all individual things, so you know, every individual bit that's been made is, is a new design mm -hmm. um, and you sort of combine it all together. Basically, making sure all these joints work, they're all, if they work in the software, you can actually make joints you, and then you can kind of see what it looks like before you waste time printing it. Yeah. yeah. So in terms of um, man hours, how long has it taken you to get to this point from start to finish with all of the exoskeleton parts? With all of those parts, mm, I'd say about, there's probably 72 to 100 hours worth of design work in that. Now, as you guys saw in the second episode of Mr. Whippy, we were talking about me having my body scanned. We used an Xbox Connect. So, Miles, how important was it and how vital was it to have the 3D scan of me in terms of scaling? Because what we were using was a standard kind That's of right. 3D mannequin that yep. you downloaded. Mm -hmm. Like the suit needed to be designed. There were certain parts that we could design out of the photos. I dragged the photos over your 3D scan. I was able to, and that was basically just sort of stopped at the front. So once we'd finished the front, everything else was, was freehand. So um, the things like the arms, uh, the, the, are these bicep rings, these forearm rings, to get sizing and scaling, obviously a mannequin is not you. Yep. So trying to design it with this, you know, oh, either that or you're over every second day, uh, and I'm taking measurements and things like that. This is just so much of an easier way to see where pits line up. You know, the the arc of the of the um, the spine. Obviously, yep. that needed to be shaped. So all of these things need to be accounted for. Mm -hmm. As you can see, you know, there's near on a perfect arc around this. Uh, where the vest touches the rear spine. Absolutely. Um, all of these little bits down the bottom here, they line up with the um, uh, with the vest, um, the belt bits. It makes it go like clockwork. It's just easier. It's, it's like when you take a mold of an actor for a bat suit or yeah, vice that's, versa. Yeah, that's right. Like they do it at high end you know, costuming for yep. movies and things like that. So why not bring it down to a budget level and do it at home? All right, as you guys can see here, this is all of the exoskeletons so far dismantled, laid out on the table. So like I said, today's episode is all about going through cataloging all the pieces, what we're doing, what we're hoping to achieve. We're then gonna bolt and screw all the pieces together, put the pipes on, suit me up, do a final test fitting before I go away. And then what are we going to do? Call it a day. Yes! <laughs> yeah. Alright Milo, we're going to start from this side, work our way down. What have we got, my friend? Alright, so people have seen this before, that's the arc reactor housing. Yep. Um, that's us that's on the chest with some magnets. Um, we have, you call these spark plugs. They look know. like spark plugs. I don't know why you call them spark plugs, but they go in the middle of the chest. They sort of dangle from that bit. Yep. From underneath the arc reactor. So we've got those, except they're a little bit too big. We need to downscale those a little bit, print them again. Yep. Um, those are a few of the chest plates where the rose joints are attached to. Yep. Uh, we've got the shoulder joints, um, more rose joints attached to that. They sit on top of the shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, we've got some leather work that you've done. That's for the bicep rings. Yep. Uh, and a little bit more leather for the forearms. Um, we have, this is the lower spine. 
Um, so there already is, are you going to say these are permanently or temporary electronics? Uh, very temporary. Okay. This was just to try and sort of see it work. Yeah. Um, so in the back of this, um, we've got some packed electronics that I've kind of put together. Some servos, that's to make these little side things pivot. Mm -hmm. um, they're obviously not finished yet, but, and all the lighting. So this is the lighting strip that goes up to uh, behind your shoulders. Now, what are the, what's the traditional name for these LED strips? This is just, um, LED strip lighting. Okay. Um, this is 12 volt stuff. This probably won't be the stuff we finish with. Electronic reasons, but basically it's not very good for, uh, battery longevity. Um, there's a lot of resistors in here that just chew up power for no reason. Mm -hmm. So we'll probably swap these out for some five volt ones. Um, again, more magnets. Now we needed to make our, or get bigger magnets for the back. Yep. Kept falling off. So we've kind of put bigger magnets on there. Um, so that's that bit. Um, then we've got, this is the start of the arc reactor. Now we're still playing with the arc reactor a little bit to see what design looks best. Um, so that's printed on an FDM machine. We've then got a Cobb LED. Uh, so this is a circuit on board uh, uh, LED rather than using the traditional normal LEDs like the 5mm LEDs you see. And that goes in the back there. Yep. Uh, then we've got, this is like a little ring that I printed on a resin printer instead of an FDM printer. Mm -hmm. um, you get obviously a clear look, very clean finish. I put a few holes in the back to sort of let the light um, pick up the detail in there. Uh, then we've got this little ring that goes on top of the arc reactor there. Yeah, so that sort of slots in there like that. Yep. Um, now, I just wanted to touch on this also. If you guys can see here, I have gone ahead and done a test coat of paint and weathering. What would we call these things? I don't even, I just call them power packs or? I don't know, look, when we were doing the CAD design, I actually started to run out of names for things. So there was like arc reactor and arc reactor housing and lower spine and then you get to these bits and you're like. What the hell is it? I just call it like lower arc reactor. So yeah, yeah, just, just so like I'm not, you know, losing track of my thoughts while I'm actually designing it. Exactly. So, yeah, so they're just... When you're printing these, and I actually printed a thread... It... I, sh I showed them that last oh. time. I was like, it's just crazy how you designed that. It printed it, and it just works. Yeah, and it works. It's so satisfying, too, when you, when you print <laughs> yeah. a thread like that. It's amazing. Um, all right, so continuing with the parts. Um, this is uh, some of the tubing for this LED lights. All this is is PVC uh, pipe, mm -hmm. um, flexible PVC clear piping. Uh, or like, like vinyl piping, which same thing. Uh, and it's just sanded on the outside. So I just grabbed some like 220 grit sandpaper and just sanded it up yep. just to sort of diffuse these LEDs a little bit. Um, and then just some standard corrugated tubing just for some of the other fluff that's on it. Yep. Um, these are, I call them back wings. So these sit on the spine. So that sits on the spine like so. Looks almost like a jet pack. A little bit, once you add some of the other things, it's kind of like a feature on a jetpack. Yeah. Um, so we've got those, some aluminium rods to hold the arms on. Uh, these are the back clips that hold the tube and the um, other tube together. Mm -hmm. uh, lower, lower spine. So these ones sit there. Yeah. And we also have a, is it a spring or a coil that goes? It's meant to be some sort of spring that sits in the middle there. No yep. idea what we're going to use for that yet, but Still working on it. We'll figure that out. Yeah, so we've got those. Um, that, it, this is the um, upper spine. Yep. Um, so this was the bit we printed in two. You can see that there's a line through there. Mm -hmm. um, and I doweled it through, so there's three metal rods that run through there. Again, these magnets will have to be bigger because they are not large enough. And they uh, keep falling off. All right, so then we've This is got, where we get messy. This is the mechanical nightmare yeah. uh, of this. So this is the arms. Um, so we've basically got, these are the connectors that join those arm bits together. Um, we've got the, these are the actual joints themselves, like the hinges. Yep. Um, that is the forearm ring. So that's that one there. Mm -hmm. uh, these bicep rings. Um, now, this is something that I was so impressed with and you picked this up. Yeah, so if you think about an arm movement, if it's completely solid through there, you'd be able to move your arm like this. But if you tried to move your arm like this, you'd snap something because these hinges will not literally move that way. Yep. So there had to be a way to do it. And had a really close look at the photos and the movie. And so what I've actually done is printed this in two parts. So this is... Look at that actual so it's 3d printed um, on one side of it there's basically a hook and the other side it's 
It's kind of just like a, um, well, it's the opposite side of the hook with a little chamfer on there. So you can push it together, it locks in, it's, it's not coming apart. Yep. Um, it's quite solid. Um, just to hold the weight of the arms, it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. um, these little things are printed on the resin printer as well because when I printed these on FDM, they kind of didn't come out too well. So, so to those pieces there were printed on the same printer as the clear resin That's piece right. here. That's yeah. right, yeah. So just, I printed them on the FDM, wasn't really happy with their outcome, so um, I thought I'd try resin ones instead. They might hold up, we might need to recast them in something later on, but that's your job. Two of the bicep rings, two of the forearm rings, all the hinges, that's all the bolts that just goes into the arms themselves. Look at that, Geeks, that is just mental. It's bedlam. So we've got that. Riveting stuff, man. Oh, mate, the puns, <laughs> the puns are strong. Um, these are the back of the, the elbow. And so, it supports the whip or the, the prop. Yeah, whip. so uh, we'll get to the other bit in a second, but there's a cable that runs from the back yep. all the way down through here, um, and then it runs into the base of the whip down here. So, and there's a couple of like more of these looking things on the tube that runs down. Yep. Um, they're kind of same shape but different. So, anyway, there's those. These are the um, back of the jetpack, as you would call it. Mm -hmm. um, so, that the cable runs out of that and then through these and then down into the whip. That hangs off these wings here. Yep. Like so. Um, and yeah, that sort of, you know. Pivots and moves. Pivots and moves. Uh, so that, these are the, some of the shoulder joints. Now, something interesting we found is, um, because this suit's gonna have to be worn a lot during the day, probably more than the actual uh, screen use suit. Uh, I know there was CG a lot of the screen use suit. I think you were telling me that there were scenes that they actually didn't even have the suit on. So when he's arcing up at Tony before he yes. hits the fuel, he wasn't even wearing the arms. Right, fair enough. Yeah. So what we did was print this shoulder joint because we found it moved a little bit too much. It was creaking a little bit with a solid piece. We printed this in TPU, which is a flexible material. So this just gives it a little bit of flex, just so if you move your arm in the wrong direction, the suit's not gonna crack or something's not gonna fly off or break and you're in the middle of a convention and it's really, really bad. So made that out of a flexible, so we've got two of them for each side. This is just a, because we haven't bought the rose joints yet, this is just a, a temporary piece, so it looks like garbage, but it's just there to sort of hold the suit in the right position. Once you guys see it positioned, you'll understand why we had to temporarily print it. Yeah, otherwise the arms fall down and they don't work. Yes. Uh, and that's it for now, so I think it's time to put it together. That's pretty much it. So apart from all the stuff you see here, we've got the mannequin with the leather harness with obviously some 3D printed pieces that are permanently fixed in place like these power packs, the power brackets. If we go around here, you guys can see those massive, massive magnets right there. Um, and there are magnets inserted here. We will be replacing them with the bigger magnets. Of course, we've got the jumpsuit from the previous episode, the boots, so. Yeah, what the hell are these for? Holding the nuts. I can. <laughs> <laughs> So these what we're using for the joints. Um, if you just put a straight bolt through there, it wouldn't really spin all that well. The bolt actually might come undone. So we're using these rivet nuts, and that allows this to spin because they're a smooth outside finish. And then we put the second side of the hinge on, and then we put. So normally these would be pressed in, so that would be the outside face. But now we're using it like that, and we get the other side of the hinge that through there. Have another riv nut. Push it through. And then this comes in behind there and bolts in like that.
All right, so now that we have assembled all of the 3D printed pieces, uh, we're gonna show you guys how to suit up properly. So this does include literally being bolted into this thing. So I'm gonna show you guys everything on me, including the jumpsuit, show you guys how those beautiful arms move. And honestly, any excuse to wear this thing is just an absolute joy. So are we going to fit up the mannequin or the dummy? Yeah, exactly. Wait, what? So why the singlet, Chris? Well, Miles, if you must know, the body fat percentage experts will come into the comment section if I don't wear a singlet, and it will be a barren, barren wasteland. Too fat, get out. That's it, just cosplay over? Yeah, cosplay, get okay. doors there. Oh, okay. Off you go. Do you want me to leave this at the front door? Yeah, yeah, get, go on, just get. I get naked. Hey, Chris, have you found your bird yet? Have you done the stitching properly? Are the sleeves loose? That's the recording, right? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. So like Miles was saying, without that pivot point on that upper arm piece, I wouldn't be able to mm. get that much flexibility. So there's not a great deal happening um, here at the moment because this bit isn't here. So the more leverage you have at your wrist, the more this will twist here. Um, but at the moment, because we haven't finished the wrists and the, and the whips. And once and I have a grip of the whip, then it'll, yeah, be a... it, it'll push this back up a little bit. Yeah. Um, and you can see, these joints up here, this is why we made these out of flexible so that when he moves around, this isn't under massive pressure and isn't gonna snap. Because that is a point that is up under a little bit of pressure. I'm very happy. You're very happy? You happy? I'm happy. Scratch your butt, scratch oh. your butt. <laughs> I can. Get an idea of the weight. It's about two and a half kilos worth of plastic has gone into it so far. There has been some reprints. So it's all been printed in this blue printed, well, the majority of it's been printed in this blue printed stuff. Um, just something I had laying around, so I thought we'd use it. But yeah, so most of it is, like nothing's really solid. There's all sort of like 50% infill. For your 3D printing people out there. And a nice two and a bit kilos evenly. Yeah, spread across out. your body, it's nothing. Nothing at all, man. Yeah. Nothing at all. And so, what we'll be running all the electronics is we have this battery here. So, that weighs maybe 500 grams. So, oh. <laughs> could even disguise it as another like prop or. Yeah, but something so like that. So, I, I made this pocket functional if um, we do need for anything, but if anything, man, it can just. Yeah, hang on the back, back or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So looks like a um like a smoke bomb or a grenade. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks very much for watching guys. That is part five of Mr. Whippy done and dusted. It is now time to head off to the States. Milo, great success today. Thanks very much, brother. Um, so when I get back from the States, it's gonna be in five weeks' time. Um, I will be leaving the exoskeleton here for the time being. Uh, we're gonna get to work painting it all. Uh, you were talking about what's the 2K paint? You're oh, thinking of? Uh, just automotive 2K paint. Yep. Just a little bit uh, tougher. Um, the high feels better than the st standard rattle can stuff you can buy. It's thicker, 
less sanding, lots of stuff. So that should be good. Easy, man. Yeah. Sounds, sounds like a plan. Um, guys, thank you so much as always for watching. The next time you see me, I'll be in the States. I'm going to be making sure to do a lot of vlogging there. Also vlogging and covering San Diego Comic Con as much as I can and eventually an upcoming convention in Louisiana. And I have to still announce that, but that is why I'm staying in the States for five weeks time. Guys, wherever you are in the world, have yourselves a cracker of a day. Hope you're well, hope you're happy, be merry, be silly. You've got the rest of this. Off you go, do it. Cosplayers do it best. Until next time, geeks, always remember. Where's, oh, that, where's, that, oh. where's the wrench? You're filming this, aren't you? I am. Um...